You had a question here? Yes, this um, universal background check thing for uh, gun sales, I'm, I'm making the assumption that you're both supporters of it since it seems like the majority of the Democrat caucus is supporters. Um, I'm curious how that is going to be enforced. Like, um, how would anybody know if a private firearms transaction took place without the running the background check? Like, for example, if you look at uh, Washington's troubles with implementing the law that they passed this past year, no one knows how to enforce it. No one know. each agency is sort of pawning off on everybody else. The attorney general is saying, go talk to the state police. State police is saying, talk to the Department of Licensing. They're saying, talk to the local police. The local police are saying, we don't know how to enforce this. So how will it be enforced? And how would somebody know if a transaction took place without going through the background check process? I don't totally understand the exact question. Yes, I support it. I'm a gun owner myself, but you know, I'm happy to go through a background check if one person you know, with a dangerous felony in their background, is prevented from getting a gun that prevents them from going out and hurting somebody, that is worth, a, you know, me going through a background check as a gun owner, absolutely. Um, I don't, I mean, I, I'm not aware of kind of the administrative problems. Um, I'm certainly interested in looking at those. It's my understanding that there would be, you know, liability on the part of the person who doesn't, if you don't do a background check as the law requires, and somebody who is a known dangerous person and flagged and should not be able to access a weapon, uh, you know, goes and hurts somebody with it. Right. But I don't know that that's. But how, how would somebody know that I sold the gun to them if, if, <clears throat> if I didn't go through the background check process? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know the administrative details of it. All I know is that administrative headaches are worth keeping families safe. So whatever administrative headaches are worth, uh, well worth it to me, particularly in this community. I mean, Paul Kemp just left, you know, his his uh, brother-in-law, Steve Forsyth, who's also a friend of my husband, was, you know, just a couple of years ago was, you know, killed at Clackamas Town Center. In fact, one of the, you know, there's kind of a package of bills, you know, to talk about the gun issue, you know, just closing the loophole. Oregon is only one of a few states, that, in fact, it's the only state on the West Coast that allows people that we have identified as dangerous and you know through our background check system to be able to go buy a gun legally if they do it from a private party sales if they go to Walmart they can't buy a gun actually no that's illegal if somebody's a, a felon or a domestic abuser it's illegal for them to purchase a gun or have it in their possession it's actually not so for the domestic violence that actually is what we're adding to it that actually is not like you actually for currently now for domestic violence convictions you still can purchase weapons so that's one of the ones that we're going to be changing All right, so you're telling me there's domestic violence situations that aren't a class a misdemeanor or worse because if somebody has a class A misdemeanor or worse, they are legally barred from owning a firearm. That's the way the law stands right now. Good, first of all. <laughs> uh, and, and second of all, so, so to, you know, in terms of your question, I don't know, the, I'm, I'm not a detail in the administrative effort. All I know is I support you know, responsible gun ownership. One other bill that I've proposed as a package, in fact, in direct response to the Clackamas Town Center shooting, when we went and talked to Sheriff Roberts about it, you know, the person who, who perpetrated that crime stole a gun from somebody that's gun was sitting in a, next to a bookshelf. I, as a gun owner, know that safes are incredibly expensive, uh, particularly to get good ones. And I have a kid in my house, so we have good ones. And uh, so I've, I've reintroduced a bill to provide a tax credit for anybody who goes out and buys a gun safe. I like that to. idea. I like that. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, um, you know, this will be one of the contentious debates in the Capitol. Um, you know, obviously, I, as an attorney, as a legislator, I support the Second Amendment. But the Second Amendment is the only piece of the Constitution. It's the only constitutional right that in its own language says a well-regulated militia. So I don't think there's anything that having reasonable regulations on gun ownership. Well, regulated meant something else 230 years ago. It meant well-practiced. That's what they meant. That, that's an interesting <laughs> Re Regular. Theory. Regular. It's what they meant. Well-regulated militia is the text. Anyway, I don't want to get into a debate. I, you know, I appreciate that you come to all these town halls and you ask legislators questions. I'll let Jed answer it. You know, I don't dug the question. I absolutely support universal background checks. Uh, I support reasonable, you know, regulations as a gun owner, but also as a mom and as somebody who wants to feel safe in my community. And I also support background checks. But again, my big issue is how will it be enforced and, I, and how will people and know and I think that our, if somebody's breaking the law? We don't know the administrative yeah. stuff, but any administrative headache is worth it to me to keep families in our community safe. So I appreciate your making your. Thank you. Position. Yes.